it's often said that you can never go home again, but it's really interesting to take a visit to... Hello! Oh my goodness sakes! <laughs> we're, we're early, but... Yes, you are! <laughs> Come on in! Hi! Oh my goodness sakes! Aren't you a pretty little picture there? Oh, good grief! Oh. All right, so what are we doing? <laughs> we're gonna go see all our friends. Oh my gosh! I miss you so much! It's so good to see you! There! Hey. <laughs> Success! And I could peek up inside behind and this screw is actually snapped clean off here. We're looking at a new tow vehicle. Not this right here, <laughs> but maybe this right here. What do you think? So we have it set to about the right length, the bobber rests on the water, and then that will put the worm down almost to the bottom. Okay, and that's where we've been catching them today. Look at that, there you see us right there, both of us? Yeah. It's pretty neat, huh? <laughs> I found my shirt. And look who we ran into right over here. Hi guys. <laughs> it's about time now. It is about time now, Brad and Diana. So we went downtown Holland and had an absolutely fabulous meal. Oh my gosh. So what did you have, Michelle? where I used to ride my bicycle up and down. <laughs> Son of a man who whipped his fingers to the bone Just trying to make something out of nothing, you know That's the house right there Oh wow! that we bought and that's where we lived when I went to high school right there and uh, kind of neat. We had done a lot of work and we had to rebuild the front porch on it and that back deck that's on there we built, but we didn't have it all. I see they built all that fence and everything around it and we didn't have anything like that. We had a little garage in the back that the doors never worked so we couldn't get in, but I see they built a whole new garage there and everything. Really cool. I used to, that little porch there, that little side porch out the back, Yeah. I could jump up between, climb up stand on the railing and get on the garage roof and then from the garage roof I could jump onto the house roof and I could go all the way up on the top of the house <laughs> roof and I could just sit up there and do stuff <laughs> and then uh, one time we had to do some fix some caulking work and so I told my dad well, I can get up there so I went and went all the way up and on that top peak I sat there and with my legs straddled right there leaned over the peak with a caulk gun and caulked the uh, the gap that's right there you were handy yeah, well, so my, my dad was there on a ladder. He couldn't reach it, so he was right there below me. And he says, this is really making me nervous. I said, I'm not going anywhere. Did and your I, mom know about this? I, think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she knew about that at all. But uh, what's funny is then, um, you know, my uh, so my dad says, making me nervous. And now I, I think about doing that and everything. My palms are kind of sweaty. Just thinking, Just about, thinking about, about that. <laughs> so we'll go look at some other stuff. I want to see the world from the edge of my seat A big windshield or a plane, not a TV screen This magnificent structure behind us, that's Tibbetts Opera House, which in Coldwater, Michigan, this little town of just under 10,000 people, has a phenomenal theater program and one of the best, acoustically best theaters that I've ever been to. And in fact, here's a little secret for you. 
One of the first jobs I ever had was right here at Tibbetts Opera House. I started out as an usher when I was about 14 years old or 13 years old here, and then uh, started doing spotlight work. Um, I would run the spotlight for some of the summer stock uh, professional theater productions that they had, and then did light board. And uh, it was a great time. And we've seen some plays here too. As we were driving around, I saw something. I had Michelle film it, and I want you guys to see it too. And what this building is, right here we're driving by, you see, is the place where Michelle and I met. And at that point, we were all smiling, it's because it's a good story. Um, that was Gillespie Funeral Home, and a friend of mine, uh, Keith, was actually the mortician there at the time. My father died um, fairly young. He died at 65 years old, and we're all living here in cold water at the time. And um, ironically, my parents and Michelle's parents were friends. Uh, my parents owned a fabric store that had sewing machines here in cold water, and Michelle's parents in Port Huron had a sewing machine store, and they sold the same brand of sewing machines. And um, anyway, they had known each other, they had met at conventions and known each other. In fact, you knew my mom and dad, didn't you? Yeah, I knew. I knew his mom and dad, I didn't know him. Yeah. And um, so when my father died, they made the trek from Port Huron to Coldwater to come to one of the visitations. And it was there that Michelle and I met. And uh, kind of the rest is, the rest is history. 32 years ago. 30, 33 years ago. 33, 30, th that we met. Oh my goodness. 33 years ago. Wow. That's yeah. been some time. And, um, but yeah, I just... Little, it felt little... like forever. <laughs> 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 just kidding. <laughs> it, it has. It was a, kind of a really instant connection. And we knew within a couple months of dating that uh, we were going to be married. But uh, we're going to stop in at a place right now, a store, um, to see if an old acquaintance, if people here, we hadn't really planned to come to cold water. And uh, we just happened to be kind of in the area. So this is a real memory lane thing. But we're going to see if an uh, old acquaintance of mine is here. Um, he actually owns this jewelry store here. But he's he's old like me, so he <laughs> might be retired. We'll see, we'll see if Brad is in here. So let's go. It's often said that you can never go home again, but it's really interesting to take a visit to a place you grew up in. And we're here in Coldwater, Michigan, which is a town I went to high school in and I actually had a business here. I had a photography studio. Behind us is the Masonic Temple here in Coldwater, and it's very unique in that it actually has the Order of the Eastern Star, number one oldest in the world. But right across from this, Masonic Temple right across the street is where my photography studio was and I had for a number of years and I'll put some pictures up on the screen right now and you can kind of see what that was like. Jim Fisher Photography turns your memories into keepsakes. Special moments, special people, those special times in your life captured in Jim's unique style. Portraits that will last a lifetime from Jim Fisher Photography in cold water. I'm gonna wanna show you what that corner looks like now. And um, it's kind of interesting. I think that's one of the things they might mean when they say that you can't go home again. Let me, let me flip the camera around so you can see. Yeah, so right behind me on this corner is where my photography studio was. After I sold it, moved out, another gentleman had a photography studio there and 
Then there was some kind of unfortunate incident with a building behind where some people started a fire to burn somebody out of that building and it spread. And well, let me show you what that looked like. Someone told me once years later that the, my old photography studio had burned down and it's like, how can that happen? It was brick, <laughs> but it obviously did and is gone and is now uh, outdoor dining for this Italian restaurant. One of the places that was right down the road from our house, I used to ride my bike to is this beautiful building right behind us, which is- The library. The library. And Michelle is really ecstatic about that because I don't know if you know, she worked at the library. In 20 here. years. So. I always like to see libraries when we go to any town. <laughs> Gotta see what it's like. So we are actually gonna go in and see how much it's been added on to a whole bunch since I was in this area. And um, so I know it's just totally different than it used to be, but come on, let's go inside. What'd you think of the library, Michelle? <laughs> it was, it's really neat. The building is very interesting because it's an old building and then they've added on to it. And so it's very broken up in sections, but it's nice because then they have like the adult section on one floor and they have the teen section on um, a lower floor. And there were some kids in there on the computer and it's a really neat space. And then, um, very modern looking. And then they have the children's section and of course elevators to get to all of the sections. So um, it was really neat. They had some neat murals and of course some of the architecture is really just beautiful. And then see what they did with it on the inside. Yes, yeah, and it's really nice because they kept the kind of, when they put the additions on, they really kept with the architectural integrity of the building, which was nice. We filmed us going into the library and a couple little shots inside, but libraries are just one of those places that we really like to respect people's privacy. Um, people bring their children there, and while it is a public space, um, it's still kind of a privacy space. So I made sure to not get any people in any of the shots and just a couple things, kind of give you a flavor of that. I'm a product of my granddad's son. Hard work and hands and a job well done. So we mentioned that our parents owned similar businesses and my parents had a fabric store. Well, that's where this empty space was right here. There was a building that was right there that's since been torn down for more parking for this like CVS drugs, which used to be the A&P uh, grocery store. Um, but uh, it was there and you were at the store once or twice. Oh, or several there? times. Several times. And um, it's just kind of kind of interesting that Michelle and I never met before that. One thing we didn't mention about us getting married is right after my father died, my mom asked me if there was anything of his that I wanted, um, you know, as a memento or as a, as a memory of him. And well, my dad, his skin was really alkaline and he worked in some weld shops and things. So he never wore jewelry. And so he never wore his wedding band. So I asked my mom, I said, you know, one thing I'd like, it's just in his box there is I would like dad's wedding band. I'll keep it. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll meet someone. And sure enough, we met um, one or two days later and we were married with my dad's wedding band right there. And um, yeah, so it's pretty, pretty emotional, pretty special, but we're getting ready. We got to go and meet old friends for dinner. We ran into some old friends of mine here and we're actually going to surprise them for a dinner. Skin as thick as railroad ties And you could see kindness in his eyes I didn't want to do what he did But I always wanted to be just like him Strong enough to stay and fight A 
man enough to do what's right. His blood is in my own. The good and the bad in between. While we were eating dinner with friends, old friends, there at the restaurant, we got talking about this right here, and this is the old train depot here in Coldwater, and I guess the train cars, I thought that they were just decorative, but they have a steam engine that comes and runs, and runs between Coldwater and Quincy, and where they got the little, what's their train called? Well, neither of us can remember, but I'll put it up on the bottom of the screen right here. But and it runs every weekend. And then they do specialty things like uh, at Halloween, they have a special Halloween train ride and probably something at Christmas. So yeah, yeah. but it runs every weekend. Yeah, they could do like a Christmas Polar Express. Who knows what all they do? But we'll put a link to all that information in the description on the video below. We are about one hour um, from Port Huron, my hometown, and Jim's... My, my, my adopted hometown. Yeah. No, I call it my hometown. <laughs> and we are really, really excited. It has been nine months since we have been back there. And a lot of the people that are there, we haven't seen for nine months. My parents, one of my sisters are uh, friends and neighbors and our church family. It's going to be really great. We've got all, it'll be a busy time while we're home seeing everyone and uh, connecting with as many people as we can in the short time we're going to be there before we head on to our next place. Hungry for the road all my life. Thirsty for adventure all my youth. Chasing all my freedoms down Liberty Avenue. There are a few people that uh, don't know we're coming. We're hoping to surprise them. Some people we really needed to let know because we wanted to plan things. So it should be a good mix of uh, fun surprises and good fellowship community time back with the people who have known us for a long time. I need a little taste of home, home, home. I need a little taste of home. We are almost to our destination, and the really cool thing about today, our travel day today, is it's my birthday. <laughs> and it's been a really great one so far. We um, had a really nice relaxing morning and a phone call from our daughter and got to meet our son for lunch on the way here. And um, so, yeah, soon we're going to get settled into our new home for the next several days. Yep, we're going to a boondockers welcome site. And uh, it's kind of nice. It's actually run by a friend. And uh, he was a little disgruntled that we didn't stay there before we left town. But now we're going to be able to stay there, uh, coming back in for our little surprise visit. So that'll be nice. Happy birthday, me. <laughs> Everybody wish Michelle a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, the, the best day to be on Facebook is the day of your birthday. It's the greatest day. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to back up. All right, here we go. Inch and a quarter is what we need. Got the feeling in your bones. Make you feel right at home. I overshot, but I go forward. That's it, right there. to one of our 
favorite local Port Huron haunts for uh, Michelle to kind of meet up with a bunch of her friends and uh, typical our friends, <laughs> I guess, yeah. Um, but uh, in typical Port Huron fashion, it's what we call catching a bridge. So one of the three drawbridges downtown is uh, going up right now so boats can go through and uh, it's a road we need to take to get to where we're going. <laughs> So you're messaging everybody? Yeah, I'm saying, in, in, uh, wouldn't you know, we caught a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Just bought my ticket, I pick up the phone. I'm calling to tell you that I'm coming home. <laughs> got, them all, got them all squared away? Yeah, yeah, she's like, is it on the left or the right? She thought it was a whole growing for some reason. I said, no, oh, no. Home, 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 I'm coming home. A little taste. Home, 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 I need a little taste of home. A little taste of home, 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 I'm coming home. Hey, good to see you. Oh, yeah, good to do the yeah. Do the the shuffle. <laughs> hey, sir. Good. How are you doing? Hi. 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 My uh, not how much I make a button. I'm like, my my hubby's coming. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Nice to meet you, sir. I heard a lot about your travels with the people out there. Hi. Hey, sir. Good. Yes, you are. <laughs> Come on. 
Come on in. Hi. Oh my goodness sakes. Aren't you a pretty little pitcher here? Oh, good grief. Oh, God. Miss you guys. Oh. Oh, love you so much. So good. God kept you safe. Oh, yes. I'm praying for you every day and every night. So, oh, wow. Good to see you. Come on. Good to see you. Oh. Oh. Your mom is getting ready. Okay. Oh, come on. Hey. Jim, good to see you. Oh, my see you. Gosh. Oh, my. Oh. oh, I'm so glad God kept safe. And oh, yeah. We have enjoyed those blinds you've been doing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Those are awesome. Come on in. Okay. Bernie, they're here. We're early, too. We're early. Oh, I know. I'm just so. Oh, my God. I just got, I took a bath this morning because I was, it was too late last night. We were up working this so, so late last so night. Why late? That's the only time we get things done, can okay. surgery. You hug that. Hug yeah, I, I know, yeah. We don't have much room in the... Oh, there's enough. Plenty, plenty. Hugs yeah. are big and small. We love, our, we love our little um, hallway. <laughs> this is our wall of fame. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so a couple of days ago, Michelle went in to get something out of the bathroom here, and she noticed something and came out and asked me, and, well, come look at this. And um, actually this screw right here in this cabinet was backed out a little bit, she noticed, but then also noticed that the uh, cabinet was down a little low. And so I started doing some investigation and the way this is designed, there's a couple screws here that hold the cabinet um, to the wall and then a couple screws up in here. And this is one of them and I could peek up inside behind and this screw is actually snapped clean off here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cabinet down and kind of do some investigation and maybe do a little bit of reinforcement and see if we can improve how this is attached to the Airstream. and what made this cabinet loose and what I could see by peeking in behind is that one of the screws that held it, there's two screws that hold it from the top, one goes here and one goes here, this one actually snapped clean off and uh, that's um, this screw right here, you can see it's the, the point's gone, so that snapped off during the travels. But also one of our rivets has popped right here, there was a rivet head that we had found. There's also some screws that mount down here. So I felt this was in the danger of uh, completely falling off, but I don't think so. I think these two screws would have held, but we still got to back this screw out here. I have enough of this out. My theory is I'll be able to grab it with a drill driver just like it's a drill bit, tighten that up on and be able to back it out, make it a little easier. So let's see if we can do that. So let's work on getting that. Let me see what's gonna be in the way or not in the way. I think that'll be fine. This has a pivot head, so I can do the rivet in a few different ways, like that, or I can pivot it, have it more traditional this way, and I think that way will work out just fine. So the rivet inserts into the rivet gun. You have an eighth inch rivet and the proper rivet receptacle. See, there's a few different ones with this. That goes right in there. The rivet inserts into the hole, and then it's gonna be a two press. The first one is going to tighten the rivet up behind, and our second press should be snapping the rivet off. Just like that, rivet it back on. 
we're at a boondockers welcome, which is actually a friend of mine who is a contractor, and he's got some screws that are the right size, and they're actually a hardened screw like this, and they're coated, which should work out really well, but the only size he had were three inch ones, and I need two and a half. So then we cut them down right there to two and a half inches, you can see. So we're a little flat, but that still should thread right in. So we're gonna try these out and try to remount this thing back up here on the wall. super sturdy here now. I've got the two new screws right here. They're going to the same holes through the cabinet and up into the structural frame of the Airstream. Then there's two screws that's back behind here that again are going into the structural frame. These are the two are the new ones that my friend cut to length. Um, these are going in right here and providing support as well. And um, then our side panel is all screwed on. That is sturdier than I ever remember it being. Maybe we got another 50,000 miles where I need to do something else. It's a rainy day and we've got to move today, but it's a it's actually gonna be a really difficult move, but easy all at the same time. We've been mooch docking with friends and we're here in Port Huron. And we've been up here about five days and so it's time to go dump the tanks. So we've got to run to a campground so we can dump the tanks and then come back. But we still have to pack everything up just like we're moving across the state or halfway across the country. So I'm just about to raise all the stabilizers. Michelle is getting everything packed up inside the camper and uh, Anyway, we're going to go about four miles down the road to dump our tanks and then come right on back. And just set those aside and then we'll do our light check.
Ford dealership in Port Huron. As long as we're back home, we thought we'd come back to where the truck came from. And we're looking at a new tow vehicle. Not this right here, <laughs> but maybe this right here. What do you think? What's the, uh, what's the tow and payload capacity of this guy? Gonna take you for a ride in my brand new car. I've been here since 1996. Uh-huh. And the guy that uh, used to own this place, his name is Barney Wood, and his son owns the joint now. And when I was a used car manager, um, when I got my inventory sheet, I had a car on my inventory for 9,000 days because he didn't want to take it off the inventory sheet. It was one of the last cars his dad ever bought. Uh-huh. So it sat on my inventory sheet for Years, years and years and years. Gonna take you for a ride in my brand new car. My brand new car. My brand new car. Gonna show you how the shifter feels. Cause tonight is the night that we make it real. Gonna take you for a ride in my brand new car. Good morning. I'm uh, uh, texting. Well, I hope I see you when you come back to Michigan. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> and I was going to send you a picture. You're, you're precious. Oh my gosh, she was sitting in the box for uh, with all our garden stuff because she can't go out in the garden. Mm -hmm. But she's thinking as well. I can sleep in the garden stuff then if I can't go. At least it smells like outside. Oh yeah, she is so. <laughs> you guys how are you i've seen a few of your uh your posts and everything it looks like you're having a great time yes. <laughs> oh yeah is that why you didn't tell me where you were yes <laughs> i am glad to see all of you here and um and i'm glad to be here that we can worship together face to face and we welcome those who are online with us um, we are glad that we can all worship together as the family of god and and would our children please come forward with Michelle? Okay. So Michelle used to be Christian Educator Education Director here. So I thought that uh, you could be one of the kids today, Michelle. Okay. Jim, I'm sorry I didn't invite you up here. Yeah. You know? Oh well. Yeah, he's really the kid, uh, actually. Now, I have a question to ask ask of you. What? is a veteran. Yeah. A person that served in the military. Yeah, we have several in this congregation. So um, I'm going to ask if you are able, those of you who have served in the military, to please come forward. We're, we're not only going to honor and remember those who have passed on, and probably some of you know them, but we also want to recognize all of you, that we owe you a great deal for your service in the military. Um, our freedoms would not be what they are if it were not for you. So our visit to our hometown, not only seeing our dear friends, but spending quality time with them. Reconnecting with their lives' rhythms there. <laughs> and sharing memories. Our journeys may have taken us far, but there's always a bit of home in our hearts. Just buy my ticket, I pick up the phone. And sometimes we learn that we are even closer than we thought. Are you related to Christine? Shut up. My sister. Shut up. Oh my God. I, she was my crush in second grade. This is Edson. <laughs> No matter how far we travel or what sights we see, there's nothing like a visit home to fill our love tanks. In our travels, 
we've discovered that home isn't the place you live, it's the people you share time with. Thanks for sharing time with us. And like Dorothy said, there's no place like home. Living full time in our Airstream, we always find it a treat to return home to visit friends and family. Our hometown visits included three Michigan cities. First, we traveled to Coldwater, Michigan, the town where I grew up. Then to Port Huron, Michelle's hometown, and the city where we lived our entire married life. You can see those earlier videos in this playlist. Our last hometown visit is Holland, Michigan, my boyhood home. Holland is on the shores of Lake Michigan and is known for its stunning beaches with powder soft sand, its springtime tulip festival, and for its hospitality. And of course, Holland State Park is right on the shores of Lake Michigan. And behind me is one of the sunsets that this park is so famous for. Um, truly, truly a beautiful beach and a beautiful area. A few years back, I was at this state park. In fact, before we bought the Airstream, and I did a photographic adventure of a moonset over the Big Red Lighthouse. And let's look at some of that right now. We're heading to Ottawa Beach Park in Holland, Michigan to photograph the moon over the Big Red Lighthouse. So the moon's setting, ambient light's coming up. We should work out just about perfect. I'm getting pretty close to the shot I had envisioned. So I heard there's a hot babe host over here. Oh, I just texted me. I heard it go. Oh, what you up to? Riding the other campground. Oh yeah. What are you up to? What's going on over there? Um, it's shady and it smells like cypress trees. <laughs> We stayed at Holland State Park's Beach Campground this past June, where we served as the campground host. This was our first hosting experience at a Michigan State Park, but definitely not our last. We served a total of three months as campground hosts at three different Michigan State Parks, our thoughts about campground hosting will be the subject of a future video. One of the events we coordinated was a fishing program on the boardwalk. So we have it set to about the right length, the bobber rests on the water, and then that will put the worm down almost to the bottom. Okay, and that's where we've been catching them today. What are you catching? Um, in the bucket. If you want to take a look, they're mostly gobies.
Whoa. Who's taking this off? <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, Good job. Go. Let's say 21? 24? Mm -hmm. Michelle and I made a quick trip to Saugatuck, Michigan, which is a great fun little town in the western side, southern western side of Michigan. And look who we ran into right over here. Hi guys. <laughs> it's about time now. It is about time now, Brad and Diana. We had a great lunch together right beside us here at the Butler restaurant. And we're kind of walking around seeing what this town has to offer. found my shirt. Trees. I look at the connection between nature and us human beings. The air that we breathe back to those trees, back to us, it is a special connection. So when I'm within the nature, for me it's not just trees. I see myself, I see other people there. So as an artist I believe each and every tree stands for each and every human being. Tell me about this sculpture on this pedestal here behind us. Yeah, it was gifted to the city of Sagatak from the Amawazi store that we actually went in and looked around. It's all things from Africa. So it's a beautiful sculpture here. Very nice. In the middle of this beautiful park. That's pretty amazing. And Sagatak is really kind of a fun little town and a lot, there's a lot going on here. So that's something you never think about, is that these kind of shots, we gotta come back up and get the camera. So this is a path that will take us around to just a hiking path that continues on just dirt. It's not, you know, paved or, or um, wood like this, mm -hmm. but it goes up and around, loops around and drops you back into Lake Makatawa campground. So that's where? Yep, that's where she, Kathy was saying that mm -hmm. they go up from the campground in Lake Makatawa, up the path and around, and then they loop, they bop out here. 
and then they just go up the stairs, the last bit of stairs, mm -hmm. to the top. Nice. And that's one way you could do it. And then, you know, if you come back down and keep going down the way we just came up, there's ice cream at the bottom. At the general store. <laughs> So here's where we are, and we just walked this little path. And then we can keep going on the trail, and that loops all around and goes and dumps into Lake Makatawa Campground right there. We heard that sometimes on the steps there are things hidden and check out this that we found on the way down. <laughs> it's so cute. Was that a ladybug? Uh-huh. Like a ladybug to me. So we went downtown Holland and had an absolutely fabulous meal. Oh my gosh. So what did you have, Michelle? Oh, I had salmon and it was cooked perfect. And it was on a risotto that had, it was a mushroom risotto, but it had asparagus in it. And, and, then, and then the sauce that was just like flavor overload. I loved it, it was delicious. It's really good. And I had a pastrami on rye sandwich and was phenomenal. And I do want to point out, I'm kind of channeling a little bit of J.J. Abrams here in the Star Trek movies, they got the lens flare going, <laughs> and that just says there's something exciting happening, right? That's what he said about that. But um, out of the frame. our dinner, that's okay. <laughs> it's hard, you know, I'm doing a lot. I'm walking and filming and talking all at the same time. If I was chewing gum, we'd be flat on the pavement <laughs> right about now. But uh, <laughs> but uh, it is it is nice to take a break from our hosting duties at Holland State Park and uh, actually get out and get out for dinner. And um, so it was really, really good. I guess we're gonna stop stop walking a for a minute. Dinner. Delicious yeah. dinner at Hops Hop. Restaurant. And I'll tell you one thing that Holland, Michigan is really known for is, well, not only hospitality, but incredibly good food and restaurants. If you've never been to the west side of Michigan, you should get there and experience some of the hospitality and great food that Holland has to offer. I'm standing on what used to be known as Park Township Airport. And as a youngster, when we lived in Holland, Michigan, this is the airport that my dad kept his airplane. And um, often I would join him right here in this building right here on Sunday mornings for what's known as hangar flying. If you've never heard of hangar flying, it's where a bunch of pilots get together, sit around, drink coffee, and discuss their adventures, um, maybe about flying, maybe not. But I remember we would show up, my dad would have a cup of coffee and um, talk with the guys here, and I would get a bottle of soda from one of those old-fashioned machines you put the quarter in or nickel in or whatever it was, and then you'd have to pull the soda out through the metal, and it was a little probably an eight ounce bottle of knee-high grape soda is usually what I drank. I'm not sure when this was added, but it's a nice addition to this now unused airport. This building behind me was used for maintenance of aircraft. There'd be some repair and things going on. But when I was a boy, um, the airport formed a club uh, for young men, for boys, kind of like Boy Scouts, except surrounded around aviation and aircraft. And we got to vote on our own name and we were the Golden Eagles Flying Club and we would meet and do things. We built model rockets and flew some model rockets out 
in the uh, airfield out here. We got clearance to do that. And um, we also like I said we'd have our meetings here and we did a field trip once to Ohio and went to the Wright Patterson Air Force Base and to the newly opened Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum. Now that's a place that Michelle and I went to last year on our trip to Airstream's mothership. This beautiful Look at that. There you see us right there, both of us? Yeah. It's pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Oh. Okay.